For today's video of our Ashton College faculty interview series, we have Ankita joining us. She's an accomplished RCIC and Ashton College instructor, and today she'll tell us a little bit about herself and her upcoming course using immigration portals. Hi, Ankita. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for uh, taking our time to do this. Of course. So my first question for you today would be, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you decide to become a Canadian immigration consultant? I was an immigrant myself. I came in, uh, my, I came to Canada in 2018 um, as a first generation of immigrant and I did study in Canada. I know the challenges um, uh, I faced as an immigrant, how to use this Im these immigration laws, how to in interpret these laws and regulations. I have seen uh, like in a lot of countries, there are unauthorized um, um, agents, so-called agents, or we call them ghost consultants. So they provide very wrong immigration advice for a hefty price to a lot of people uh, putting their future in jeopardy. Uh, so hence, I thought that I should give it back to the society. I should educate people on the importance of hiring regulated immigration consultants or lawyers who actually know or actually have that background. And while doing my own research, I gained a lot of interest in this field. Hence, I uh, came to Canada. I switched my career from a software engineer to uh, an immigration consultant. I took this course and I, I then I went on becoming uh, an immigration consultant. That's great. I can only imagine it would be very rewarding, I think, um, helping people to completely start over in a new country and also basically helping them uh, to keep safe from immigration fraud would be really great. Thanks for the answer. Uh, immigration is a very, very big step. As, as you and I both are first generation immigrants, I mean, uh, leaving our home country behind, leaving our family, friends, careers, everything behind and starting all alone in a new country is very, very difficult and challenging. And immigration is definitely a very, very important part of it. So uh, being properly, being able to properly legally immigrate is 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 one of the biggest challenges many people face these days. Exactly. That's so true. Um, did you come alone um, when you came to Canada or did you have already family here or an RCIC helping you? So for my own permanent residency, I did a lot of research and I and I did go alone without help of any immigration consultant. And I also wanted to bring my mother along with me to Canada. So in that case, for that particular uh, uh, case, I was afraid because I had uh, read all these uh, scary stories on the internet that um, uh, uh, a single parent, it may be difficult to get the visas for her, for them because, uh, again, they have um, no dependents, no strong ties to their home country. Their children are in, uh, in Canada, so that might act as a very strong proof of tie. But luckily, uh, um, I did a lot of research and I decided I'm not going to lose hope. I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to uh, tell the visa officer the truth and, and attach all the documents that I possibly have. We have a good intention and let the visa officers decide. And to my surprise that, I mean, my hard work paid off and her application was approved in about four months. And now today she is there with me in Canada told me never to lose hope in a case if you are truthful you are a genuine person your intention is good um just present everything truthfully to the visa officer and let them decide what a great and encouraging story that's so great i'm glad your mom can be here with you now thank you so much okay then let's get to the next question um why did you decide to teach at ashton college i have been teaching with ashton college for quite a quite some time now um, I, I'm very, very happy to teach at Ashton College. I think uh, one of the ma major things is the reputation and accredita accreditation of Ashton College. So I think Ashton provides a lot of quality education. They they have smaller batches of the students and they can learn in small cohorts. And I think um, uh, teaching, uh, teaching at Ashton College also allows instructors to make uh, meaningful impacts on the lives of the students. Uh, by sharing their knowledge, expertise, and insights. Ashton is also committed to excellence. They have uh, very good prepared materials and, and they really concentrate on each and every individual's needs. That's great to hear. And yes, I've definitely made the experience as a student that it's much more helpful to have smaller class sizes and you can really connect with your instructors. 
instead of being in a room with hundreds of people and your instructor doesn't even know your name. Um, yeah, definitely super helpful. Okay, then to my next question. Um, can you give us an overview of the course you'll be teaching using immigration portals? So this course is designed basically for the student uh, with practical skills and knowledge that they need to effectively navigate and utilize the Canadian immigration portals. So uh, Canada is going, uh, I mean, Canadian immigration industry is going digital. Um, IRCC is trying to uh, introduce a lot of new different portals like the citizenship portal, LMIA portal, uh, portals to apply for spousal sponsorship, permanent residency. So I think um, it will give our students an, uh, an insight into how to use the immigration portals and how to navigate them how to under, uh, understand the application process, what types of applications can be done via what kind of portals, and then how to submit the documents, what is the maximum length of documents that you need to submit. We will uh, teach students on how to uh, give, give some cases uh, uh, and, and tell them to try to uh, build those cases on the portal. And then also um, uh, immigration law is subject to continual change. So I will also um, tell them uh, about the recent changes and how to uh, track those changes so that it is beneficial for their clients. Okay, great. Thank you. Definitely seems like there's going to be a lot of benefits for those taking the course. Then my next question would be, how would you describe your methods and style of teaching? Uh, I believe in giving individual attention to each student. I would like to see first uh, what kind of students exist, what is their famili fam familiarity with the portals, are they the beginners, advanced or experts, and then accordingly I, I would like to prepare my lectures because I do not want to miss anybody. And then I also emphasize on hands-on learning. I also share my practical uh, uh, practical examples because I have been using these portals from uh, quite a, lo a long time. I want to uh, give them real life practical examples on what issues they can face, what challenges they can face while using these portals. Okay, great. Those really sound like effective teaching methods. Then the next question I would like to ask you is what has changed the most in your field since you started? A lot, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I think first is digitization, of course. Earlier, IRCC was not prioritizing digitizing things, but I think the COVID era changed a lot of things. Now IRCC is uh, focused on digitizing everything so that um, they are also using a lot of artificial intelligence uh, to help the visa officers process the applications. I mean, they are also developing certain softwares that are helping the officers with the decision making process like uh, the uh, the uh, the software would uh, determine the basic eligibility etc cetera, etc cetera. and with the introduction of all these new portals uh, has also changed i'm glad it has changed like ircc uh, uh, can send the file across across its network anywhere and when the file is online actually any officer from anywhere can access that file for example, if the client is in India, let's say, uh, but the officer initially received the file in Ottawa, they can just transfer the file uh, a remote uh, 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 online, virtually. They don't, don't need to actually uh, send them the paper copy of the file, which involves a lot of cost, a lot of money. And then also security of that file is very, very important. And it also increases the processing time. So I think with the introduction of these portals, I'm very happy everything can be done online. Definitely, I agree. That sounds like so much extra work that can just be cut out now, um, especially for the processing time, security, everything you just mentioned. Um, yeah, seems like a great step by IRCC then. I also wanted to ask you if there are any specific achievements you haven't mentioned um, that you would like to share with us. I would like to boast that I have a 100% success rate right now for all the clients. I think I treat their applications as my own, as if it were my own. I really put a lot of time and effort into the applications. I think graduating as a valid valedictorian from the UBC's immigration law program was one of a very, very great achievement for me. It really gave me a sense of accomplishment. And then it really made me feel that I did something right. And now I will be definitely better able to help the students uh, with their own immigration journeys, um, sorry, immigration knowledge, imparting them the immigration knowledge and also helping my clients with their own immigration journeys. So I think these are a couple of achievements which I'm really, really proud of. 
Wow, congratulations. That's really impressive. Um, I think, yes, that's such an important part and so great that you look at the applications just as if they were your own. Um, and yeah, apparently it, it does really show <laughs> with 100% acceptance rate. That's really great. Yeah, and another, another thing is like I always like to keep myself updated with all the changes. I in the morning it's like a ritual for me to open the IRCC websites and read on what's going on. I read out the news every morning, check out the updates and everything because I think it's very very important for us. If we are not updated ourselves, we will not be able to give proper advice to our clients. Exactly. Yes, I definitely agree. Okay, we already got to my last question for you today and so I would like to ask you whether you have any tips or advice for immigration professionals that are new in the field, recent graduates or students. First is like, I would say like continuous learning and professional development opportunities, I think are very, very important for success in our field. I think what Ashton is providing is really, really great. Uh, or these continuing, continuing professional development enhancement uh, webinars or uh, these courses, et cetera, et cetera. These, like, as an immigration consultant, the, uh, immigration law is a very vast field. We cannot know everything. I mean, in these kinds of um, 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 continuous professional activ development activities really enhance our knowledge, give us knowledge on how to, how to do a particular application. The second would be building a stronger network. Networking is very, very important in our field. Uh, as an immigrant, as immigration is very vast, we cannot do everything ourselves. And so with networking, you are able to collaborate with your peers and colleagues across the industry, and you can collaborate and work on the case together for of a, of a client. Uh, lastly, I would like to say that embrace technology. IRCC is going digital and so should, so should uh, you. Uh, familiarize yourself with what kinds of tools and technologies exist. And even uh, um, for data tracking or, for example, holding meetings with the clients, you can use Zoom, Teams, et cetera, et cetera. There are so many ways. So embrace technology. Thank you. These are very helpful tips, I'm sure. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for joining me again today and sharing your knowledge and expertise with me. And yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.